everyone, welcome to Edger Force time again. This is General Lady Stephen GOC Edger Force. We thank the name of the Lord because the Lord is revealing the truth and the things that actually will be of help to us this year. There are so many people who are suffering but may not know why they are suffering. Sometimes they point their fingers to a very far distance when they really of a truth, the person behind their pains is very close to them. This is what I want to discuss and treat for the next two weeks that there is somebody who is responsible for your sorrows, that unless it's handled, your sorrows will not end. But I give praise to God because this is not a year of sorrow or shame or pain, because we are going to discover whosoever is the reason for your suffering, for your all the strange things happening to you, as I'm going to issue decrees that will bring them down. Talking on the topic I titled, Simon. Simon is the source of the sorrows of Samaria. A city called Samaria went through shame, pain, sorrow, and all the sufferings. And they were not, they didn't know who was responsible. They were actually servicing the man, praising the man, honoring the man who was actually responsible for all the pains they were going through. But thank God, there was invasion in Samaria. Simon was revealed and expelled. And they had, the Bible says, and there was joy in the city. Joy is coming to your family. Don't go away. I'll take you to the church so you get the information. The first part, next week I'm going to conclude it. I'll write back. Today, I'm going to take the move forward. You know, as I speak on the topic, I title Simon, source of Samaria's sorrows. There are some persons who are the reasons why, reason why you are not, you are where you are. There are some personalities or some group of persons or individuals that are the reason for your sorrow. Simon was the source of Samaria's sorrows. And today we want to address the power behind your problems. The personality behind your pains. Whosoever says it is, 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 is going to be over his dead body for you to make it in life, Today, that power is going down. I thought somebody would say a better amen. Simon, source of Samaria's sorrows. Simon is the source of the sorrows Samaria had carried over those years. It's sad many times to discover that we take our problems to the person or people who are responsible for them. Very sad. On the other hand, we receive condolences and um, some kind of a sympathy kind of a attention from the people who have done the evil to us. At other times, we complain and we try to, you know, give the story of the problems we are carried to the person behind the problem. Those things must expire. And because those things, you know, continue, we, some people have continued to, you know, remain in their problems. And that is, as a result of this ignorance, not knowing the source of our problems, allowing the source of our, of our sorrows to continue, we have, and many people and many problems have continued. This was the case of Samaria. The man behind the problem was the same man given so much honor and respect by the suffering people, by the people that were suffering, being afflicted by this same man called Simon. But ladies and gentlemen, Simon expired. And those enemies of yours, who are the reason for your cries, for your tears, will expire in the name of Jesus. If your amen is louder, today's message will affect you better. Let's look at Acts chapter 8. I read from verse 8 to verse 11. Acts chapter 8, from verse 8 through verse 11. And there was great joy in that city. Now, you will discover that before this joy came, there were problems. I will come back to the other part. But go forward. But before this joy came, there was a man, a certain man, called who? Simon, who, which before time, in the same city, used sorcery, witchcraft, occultism, native doctor work, and bewitched the people of Samaria, 
giving out that himself was some great one. The Bible says, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great, they were giving him honor, respect. This man is the great power of God. Go forward. And to him, they add regard, respect, honor, because that of a long time, he had been handling, manipulating, bewitching them with sorceries. The same man that was the source of their sorrow was given so much regard, so much respect, so much honor. You know, they, 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 they respected him. He said, we have a big man. We have a great man. We have somebody that is in charge, that takes care of, and in this town, any problem you have, we have somebody to handle it. The man that was the reason for their problems. I don't know who is the reason for your problem. I don't know who is telling you sorry every day and is the one behind your suffering. That personality will go down in the name of Jesus. If you look at the Bible, you will discover that the people of Samaria had been demonized. They had been, you know, they, they had gone through different types of afflictions and pains and problems. In Samaria, they had incurable sicknesses. In Samaria, they had unusual financial crisis. In Samaria, strange intimidation from neighbors, neighboring uh, villages and communities have been a, a, a regular occurrence. Samaria went through un, unimaginable abandonment and rejection by helpers. In Samaria, there was delayed or detained or diverted blessings. What they ought to enjoy, what they ought to, you know, uh, be excited about was, was always avoiding them. Strange marriage associated or related problems. Miscarriage, divorce, strange, you know, arguments and quarrels in the family, separations, you know, um, barrenness, delay in marriage, no money to, you know, pay some people or, you know, how to, when they had, uh, when the pressure was, become, was becoming too much, they had to take the woman on credit, you know, <laughs> to just uh, take her to house at, at least to say that uh, she's, that was what Samaria was going through because of a man called Simon. In Samaria, there were things like laboring for, you know, laboring without seeing the fruit of your labor. Or laboring, you are the one laboring, and that person is the one enjoying. Now, when a person like Sam, uh, uh, Simon is in your territory, or in your family, or in your office, that is what happens to such people. They are always in sorrow. And because of all these things, and in fact, Samaria went through you no know, repeated cases of premature deaths, untimely deaths, and you no know, bloodshed, and all those crises, because Simon was there, and he was the one to also. He was also the uh, the, the uh, Samaritan ambassador of peace. Anytime there was crisis, they will go and meet uh, Simon. He is the one that will steer up the crisis and he will say, no, let's come together. He will press one button and they appear to agree together. They will say, no, this man has helped us. Let's give him this. He will tell them this thing, the way you will handle this thing. This is the, the, the amount I will take. He is the one that will solve the problem. He is the one that will give. The, he will take away one and give you another five. But whosoever is manipulating you like that, Holy Ghost. So they never knew peace, no joy, no celebration. They were always sorrowful. How did I come to know this? When a man like that is in a place, he controls demonic personalities, agencies from the dark world who are you know, instructed to bring sickness, some are in charge of sickness, some are in charge of marriage problems, some are in charge of financial problems. Those demons operate there. And when those demons are working there, and you don't know how to come out of those demons, you always continue under that kind of affliction and pain. Until the Lord himself opened the door for a man called Philip and he got there. That was what these kind of people were also suffering. When you look at the Bible, 
you will discover in Joshua or uh, in Joshua chapter 7. Let's look at Joshua chapter 7. See from verse 24. Joshua chapter 7. There was this man called Achan. The Bible says, Israel, Joshua, you know, was told by God that no one shall be able to withstand him all the days of his life. He was going to take over everywhere that his foot shall tread upon. He was, that, he will, that he will step upon. And he was given so much, you know, assurance and promises and promises. And he was excited. He was going. But only to discover that somebody was there who was there to undo him, undo them. And Israel was being troubled. And, but when the thing became, the thing as somebody would say, has passed, be careful. Joshua had to gather the people and say, what is, what is going on? Who is the brain behind these pains? Who is the one causing us this trouble? And God said, go through this. And they went through some kind of you know, exercises to discover that it was Achan that was in their midst who was also ready and happily going for war and going to take over the promised land that was the reason for their suffering. Whatever powers of darkness or agents of darkness in your midst to limit the progress of the family or of the church, Holy Ghost, fire. <laughs> Now, the Bible says in verse 24, in um, uh, the passage of Joshua chapter 7, and when they discovered that it was Achan, Joshua now and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Acre, and then Joshua now addressed him and said, Why has thou troubled us? That's how I want to address those, the Simons today. Why have you troubled us for all these years? Uh, it's long I came to Port Harcourt. When I came to Port Harcourt, I didn't think that, I didn't, um, uh, it didn't occur to me that I would be a, an applicant for all these years. I, that I would spend 10 years in Port Harcourt without a house. I would sp spend 20 years in, uh, in the oil city without smelling the money of oil. I didn't intend it. I didn't, I didn't expect it. Least expected that I would grow to the age of marriage, beautiful and handsome and educated, and nobody would look at my face. I didn't expect it. So you are the one that has been the reason for my sorrow. Why has thou troubled us? And I'm addressing the power that have been troubling you. Working against you that you take one step forward, they make you to take another five steps backward. Why have they troubled you? Today, everyone will trouble them in the name of Jesus. General Davis Stephen Wilson Revival Stay tuned. not created or born again to be to be poor again you have not come into the kingdom to be pitied you didn't get into marriage to be mad and jesus christ says an enemy has done this and god says tribulation for that person will trouble you behind you that's what they do they make you appear like as if you don't know the job you know, like as if you you are you are you are not studied enough. Like as if you just bought your certificate. Like as if you are just there, you know, for one other thing or the other. You just get into the office. You were not used to sleeping before. As soon as you got that employment, every day as you step into the office, the next ten minutes you are off. You are sleeping. And then your manager, your director, somebody has seen you a number of times. So what's wrong with you? Are you sick? I'm, I'm not sick, and I'm not used to sleeping like this before. A hey, Simon. A, an alignment has started working to resist you. General Davis is back. Why has that troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. I'm not talking about that day. Today is the day for tribulation for those who trouble us. I thought somebody would say amen. Look at, look at, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Look at what the Bible passage says. And see what the Bible says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says, 
Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to do what? To pay back triple problems to those, to them that trouble us. Tribulation. And how you interpret it? Multiple problems to those that trouble us. So it is, we are doing what is the will of God. What is righteous today? That you are not created or born again to be, to be poor again. You have not come into the kingdom to be pitied. You didn't get into marriage to be mad, to be deformed. You didn't get into the oil city to, to, to be a victim of circumstances. You didn't go to Portaco to look road. Somebody said, I hear that one. You, were, you, 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 you didn't start work. You, had, you were excited when you got the job. But it becomes, you no. Know, as soon as you started working and working and working. Do you know that as I'm talking now, somebody met me and he said, for 20 months, I have not been paid. No, that's not the plan of God. And, 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 and David said, is there not a cause? And Jesus Christ says, an enemy has done this. And God says, tribulation for that person will trouble you. I don't think you are hearing me now. Whosoever is saying that you will continue to suffer in this condition, Holy Ghost! If your fire is loud, more, more or no fire will be going out to deal with your enemy. So, be sure you are releasing enough fire. And that's how they, they, they stoned the, 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 the man, Achan. And, uh, you know, the Achan... So the Bible says that there was this other person, Acts chapter, you know, 13. Acts chapter 13. Let's read from verse 6 to verse uh, um, 11. Acts chapter 13, verse 6 to 11. Here was this man who just received appointment as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some are ministers of the federal government. And his portfolio was that he was a minister to the Gentiles. Like we have minister of transport, we have minister of works, we have minister of different things. Apostle Paul was given that appointment as a minister to the Gentiles. He was equipped. There are some ministers with that portfolio. He's as he had portfolio and his ministry was actually properly uh, serviced and equipped with money and materials and power from on high. He was to bring the Gentiles into the kingdom. Then the very first assignment he met was uh, you know, a place where a man was there who would not want him to excel in that business. Look at it. In, uh, and when they had gone through the eyes unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, certain Simon responsible for our sorrows. A false prophet appeared to be a child of God. Appear says he's a Jew, but was a native doctor. Amen. And he was his name was Bar Jesus. Go to verse 7. He was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus a prudent man who was interested in Paul's ministry, in Paul's business. He said, I like your business. I want to, I want to benefit. I want to be a partner. I want to you know, occupy you. I want to involve you. I want you to do this for me. You, 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 the work you do is the area I like. And so he invited Paul and Barnabas. He said, come, let me hear what you say is all about this, your business. Give me more information about this, your, your, your kind of career, your kind of calling, your kind of something. Let me know so that I will know if I can get involved, if I can get, uh, if I can, you know, get some things and some benefits from it. Apostle Paul was excited that his business was going to start. He was going to be happy. But then, look at verse 8. But Elima, somebody said, but. That was what we read in Acts about Simon, but. Before this time, Simon bought Elimas, bought Achan, the sorcerer. For so is his name by interpretation. Elimas, we stood them seeking to turn away the right and the deputy 
from the faith to make his business to fail, to make him appear foolish, to make him appear irresponsible, to make Paul and Barnabas appear like as if they don't know what they are doing. And that's what the enemies behind you, that's what they do. They make you appear like as if you don't know the job. You know, like as if you, you, are, you, are, you are not studied enough. Like as if you just bought your certificate. Like as if you are just there, you know, for one other thing or the other. You just get into the office. You were not used to sleeping before. As soon as you got that employment, every day as you step into the office, the next 10 minutes you are off, you are sleeping. And then your manager, your director, somebody has seen you a number of times. So what's wrong with you? Are you sick? I'm, I'm not sick and I'm not used to sleeping like this before. A Simon... A, and Elimas has started working to resist you. You know, stop right there first. I'll come back here. Go to um, Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. In the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, and um, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And who is the next person, his companion? Satan standing at his right hand to help him. Two hands are better than one. Am I right? To do what? To resist him. Can you imagine that? Joshua came forward and Satan came forward. There are some people, the, the Simons, the people that are responsible for our sorrows, they go with us anywhere, everywhere we go. Because they are our friends, they are colleagues. There are people we are interested in. There are the people we tell our stories to. Our pains are shared with them. We tell them, this is what I'm going through. And so, like our shadows, they go about, let's go and meet this person. Let's go and meet this place. I remember the case of a particular woman. She, her son fell, a grown-up man, married. He fell, and as soon as he fell, he became small. He couldn't, he, his hands and legs went in. And this mother started carrying him from place to place. He fell. Just fell. How will you fall and everything will just disappear? Then they came to one place after several movements. They came to one place and the man said, Mama, now you do have now. Why did they carry up and you know how to bring him back now? Then he told the people that came with Mama, say, Mama is using him as mortar. They, they, think he, they use pistol. And that, that anytime she wants to carry load, she put it, this her son on her head to carry load. But she is the one carrying him about from place to place. Whosoever is doing you and telling you sorry, Holy Ghost! Can you imagine that? To resist you. Now, now for Simon, for Elimas, to, to say, to resist him, to spoil his name, to spoil his business, to make him, somebody said, when you he, when he are looking for money and money is not coming, they call you a lazy man. But not because you are lazy, but because somebody is just scattering. Whosoever is trying to sabotage your efforts, trying to frustrate your efforts, trying to give a, a wrong name to you, Holy Ghost! <laughs> Paul said, Paul said, I'm not going to take it lightly, you. Me, this is my ministry. If you spoil this my ministry, where will I, how will I eat? And Paul said, Elimas, you don't do this entire. But today, I'll come to that very soon. But let me still go forward and show you some other things. And uh, to tell you that the enemy cannot go free this time. Somebody said, not, never again. Somebody said, never again. The Lord, he will fight for us in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, that error and deception of the enemy must expire by fire in the name of Jesus. If there is anybody doing this in our midst, in the church here or in your family, today, thunder will strike. I don't think you are hearing me. I said thunder will strike. Wow, welcome right back. So you discover that the person very close to you is telling you sorry to whom you are reporting all your problems is the same person who actually is the brain behind all your bodies. But I give praise to God because the Lord is with me. David said, I thought it was an enemy. I thought it was somebody that hated me. Or it was you, my equal, my friend, that we used to go to church together and pray together. So you are the one behind my face. And the Bible says, 
David issued a decree, let death cease upon the earth. He issued a decree, whosoever has been responsible for all the sufferings you have been going through, as I'm going to pray now, you will experience your freedom, your enemy will go down. Stretch out towards the television and believe God for a miracle. Father, I give you praise for these ones who have listened to your word. That means that their sufferings are coming to an end. That means that the powers behind their problems are going to expire with immediate effect. Therefore, by the authority vested on me, I stretch out my hand towards the television against that strange power. Whether you are in the coven watching me or you have a screen you are using, I break that screen. I destroy that coven and I command that altar to catch fire right now, which you are using to afflict my viewers in the name of Jesus. I command and declare any mystical uh, sanctum that has been used, every coven, every sick place of darkness are being used against my viewers and you come publicly in the daytime as a friend. I command that place to catch fire and you overthrow right now like Simon of Samaria was overthrown. In the name of Jesus, the people you, you, you kept in captivity, I declare their freedom. Freedom from pain, freedom from shame, freedom from all the sufferings so they can enter into their glorious liberty enjoying what Calvary has released for them. Thank you Father because I need answer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. So, brother, sister, don't get disturbed. Whosoever is secretly fighting you, a secret arrow will hit them like it hit Ahab in the name of Jesus. Till next week, I'm John the same. Remain in your blessings. Everywhere I look, there's fear around. Many minds are fainting, cause there's a casting. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ and be saved, please say this prayer and believe. Almighty God, I have been a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me as I now repent from all my sins. Accept and confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and accepting me as your own. In Jesus' name, Amen. Worship with us at Liberation Power Ministries, number 82, Ella Power One Road, off Ada George Road, mile 4 for Tarkat, or call 003-310-7866. Email us at edgefirst at yahoo.com. You will be here again next week for another moment of freedom. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>